So we are finally here at my final versus video, at least for now. And I have to admit to everybody that has shown support on each and every one of these in this series, thank you. Because I could not have had the success without you guys, obviously. And before I get started with this video, I would just like to say, drop a like on it, subscribe to the channel, comment your opinions, because I really want to know what you guys think about this versus video, as obviously, it might be my best one to date, just with the names involved. You have Steph Curry, one of the greatest players of all time, obviously recognized as the greatest shooter of all time, and his former teammate, Kevin Durant, who is not only recognized as one of the greatest scorers, not only in the game today, but of all time, as well as being one of the greatest players. And now, obviously, that brings brings us to my video, who is better among the two? Is it Steph Curry or is it Kevin Durant? By now, I think you guys know how it works, but I'm gonna give a little rundown just for the new subscribers. We're gonna talk about the strengths and weaknesses of one player and then transition to the other and do the same thing. And at the end, I'm going to give my final verdict on who I believe is the better player at this moment. But let's just kick things off with the Slim Reaper himself, KD. Gets it into Durant. Here is Durant moving on Tucker. He turns, he shoots. Yes! With one second remaining. One second left. Durant hits a three. And Milwaukee has one timeout. They call for the timeout. Now, Kevin Durant is what we call in the NBA a unicorn, somebody that's different, unique, a one of a kind. No, I'm not talking about you, Porzingis. I'm talking about Kevin Durant. This is a guy that is considered one of the most skilled players in NBA history from just his scoring ability alone. He can shoot the three ball as one of the best three point shooters of all time. His mid range game is so unstoppable due to his high jump shot. Due to his size, he can finish at the rim over anybody in any way you want, whether it's a dunk because the KD does have some posters on his resume, or even with acrobatic finishes. At at the rim with some nice circus layups and he can get to the free throw line as well by drawing contact and he can knock down those free throws better than almost any player in NBA history and combine that with the fact that he has a post game that is unstoppable as well it really just creates a player that's only imaginable in 2k this is a guy that's seven feet tall with the ability to score in any way shape or form and also has the handles that are guard like so when we say KD is a one of a kind and a unicorn we strongly mean that because we have never seen somebody like Kevin Durant and we may never see another player like Kevin Durant. And aside from his scoring, KD also brings other things to the table. Defensively, he's not gonna shut anybody down, obviously, but he's a really good weak side shot blocker. And during his tenure with teams like the Thunder and Golden State, he proved that due to his length and quickness, he can be a good rim protector. Another thing that Kevin Durant has grown in is his ability to play make, because not only is he able to take advantage of the attention that he draws, which frees up opportunities for his teammates, as we saw against the Milwaukee Bucks last year in the conference semifinals, but he's also grown in the half court as a playmaker, primarily in the pick and roll. KD's playmaking, I believe, is probably the most underrated aspect of his game as he has grown over the years. As I remember a series against like the Memphis Grizzlies back in his OKC days, as compared to now against the Milwaukee Bucks, he was struggling just to pass out of basic double teams. Nowadays, he's not only able to do that consistently, but he can also play make in other other ways as well, making him one of the better playmakers in the league. But now that we've addressed his strengths, let's now transition into his weaknesses. And as far as weaknesses go, there aren't that many. But the one thing I want to point out is that Kevin Durant is just not dynamic outside of his ability to score the ball. And that might not seem like a big deal in comparison to like some other players around like the 10 to 15 range. But when you're compared to guys like Steph Curry, Giannis, LeBron, those are guys that can impact the game at an elite level and multiple aspects of the game. I can't really say that with Kevin Durant because outside of his scoring, he's not elite at anything else in the game of basketball. Doesn't mean that he's bad, but he's just not great at those things in comparison to some others. And that also is a reflection on how great of a scorer he is and how lethal he is as a scorer, because that just means his scoring is that good to the point that those other things just don't matter. And another thing about Kevin Durant, especially if we're talking about last season, is his inability to stay healthy. KD has been a fairly injury prone player, I'm not saying it's on the level of like a Blake Griffin or anything or a Chris Paul, but he is fairly injury prone, primarily due to his size 
he can struggle against some physicality there, which has led to him being occasionally banged up at certain points in his career, even though the Achilles injury was really just a freak accident. But for the most part, Kevin Durant is a fairly injury prone player, I gotta say. As even if you want to excuse the Achilles injury, Kevin Durant has only played over 70 games one time. And that includes last year, in which he only played 35 games out of 72 games in a shortened season. But nonetheless, KD is still an animal. We call him the Slim Reaper for a reason, right? This is a guy that in the postseason against the Milwaukee Bucks had one of the all-time great not only playoff games, but playoff series, carrying them to seven games, and yes, they did lose. But that, in my opinion, doesn't take away from the greatness that he showed in that series. But now that we've addressed KD, let's now transition into our next player, and of course, it's the one and only Wardell Steph Curry. Curry way downtown. Bang! Steph Curry from just inside half court. Unbelievable. That's his ninth three-pointer of the game already. It's all working right now for Steph Curry. When you have the conversation on who is the greatest offensive player ever, you talk about guys like Michael Jordan, LeBron James, Larry Bird, Kobe Bryant, but Steph Curry should never be left out of that conversation because he is indeed in that conversation. As just this past season, he is coming off of a year in which he had another career year, averaging 32 points along with six assists and five rebounds, shooting 48% from the field, 42% from three, and 92% at the free throw line, which accumulates to a true shooting percentage of nearly 66%. Yes, you heard me correctly, 66%. Curry really had a season for the ages last year, and it's not even just about the numbers. The numbers are just the surface level. When you watch him play, you'll begin to notice that Steph Curry does things that nobody else in the history of basketball can do, and if they can do it, they just don't even do it nearly as good as he does. For example, his ability to play make without the ball in his hands is something special. This is a guy that does not need to dominate the ball in the fashion that guys like Russell Westbrook or James Harden do in order to make plays for his teammates. Whether it's drawing double teams off the ball, coming off of a screen or a pin down, or whether it's him in transition going to the corner which draws a double team towards him because he's open, which frees up a guy like KD in the 2017 and 2018 finals to have so many open buckets. It really goes without saying that Steph Curry is one of the greatest playmakers in the history of basketball. But aside from the previously mentioned things, this is a guy that also has the ability to create his own shot as good as almost anybody else in NBA history, handle for days obviously we know what he can do as a shooter not only from behind the arc but at the free throw line his mid-range jumper may not be Kyrie Kobe and Kevin Durant-esque but he's still a pretty good mid-range shooter and fairly efficient for the shots that he takes in that area and as far as his ability to finish at the rim he may not have the Kyrie Irving layup package but he's a really good finisher especially for somebody of his size and height but now that we've addressed the strengths let's now transition to what Steph Curry doesn't do that well and for starters defense. Yes, his defense is not that good, primarily on the ball. I don't believe he's a liability in the way that a lot of people say, as it's very clear that opposing teams usually target him because he's the worst defender on the court. And would you rather target Clay, Draymond, Wiggins? I mean, obviously you're going to target Steph in that situation, but it does also speak to the fact that Steph as an on-ball defender isn't really that good. Though off the ball, I'll admit he's actually a really good off ball defender, but on the ball, obviously he can be a liability against certain teams. Another thing about Curry that a lot of people kind of overlook, even though people know, is his lack of durability. I talked about Kevin Durant's durability earlier, but Curry's is on another level. This is a guy that routinely every season, I expect to miss around 15 to 20 games. As we know earlier on in his career, he suffered with a lot of ankle injuries that still bother him to this day. As even just this past season, he was out with an injury that cost him nine games, and that doesn't sound like a lot. But when you're at the bottom of the Western conference and you're fighting for positioning trying to avoid the play-in spot which they did not do because during that time span they actually even went one and eight which included nearly a 60 point blowout to the toronto raptors so as far as the weaknesses i have to point out durability and his on-ball defense being somewhat of a liability especially against certain teams but then that brings us to our final verdict who is 
better, Steph Curry or Kevin Durant? And like I say in a lot of these videos, it is a toss up. Please do not act like it's not a debate in the comment section, even though I'm sure you're still gonna have those people that say Steph Curry, no debate, KD, no debate, and then the obligatory mustard, you're just biased, you're being disrespectful to this guy or that guy. No, they're both on the same tier. So in the words of Young Thug, relax. But as far as who I think is better, give me Steph Curry. Yeah, give me Steph. And the reason why is because as an offensive player, he's just that much better than Kevin Durant. And that's not a knock on Kevin Durant. Obviously, he's a great offensive player. But Steph Curry's ability as a playmaker, it just supersedes the gap between them on the defensive side of the ball because they're both good team defenders. So the real only difference is the on-ball defense. And on-ball, it's not like Kevin Durant is Kawhi Leonard. And on-the-ball defense is kind of overrated because you're not stopping most offensive players in this league anyways. So to conclude this video, yes, I believe Steph Curry is the better player between him and Kevin Durant. But that's just my opinion. If you disagree, which I'm sure a lot of you do, let me know down below in the comment section. And do not forget to drop a like on this video and subscribe to the channel if you haven't, as well as putting me on post notifications so you can stay up to date on the latest uploads on this channel. This is your boy Young Mustard signing out. Y'all have a blessed day. Peace.